One thing I wanted to ask you is, when we were on the phone the other day, you said that, that most golf instruction is just 180 degrees wrong as far as like in to out or out to in, like what controls what. Because if I'm just tapping a nail, right, and even if I want to hit it you know, fairly hard mm -hmm. like that, but if somebody's going to pay me a dollar for every pound of force I put into this pad, then I would really start moving my body. And I think in golf, when you really want to like hit it hard, you start really moving around and stuff. So how is body motion used or misused? In, well, it's by misused golfers? because it becomes, in most people's idea or their mind, that it's uh, the cause of everything. And yeah, like muscles. this goes this, then it carries this, then it carries this, and finally that. And so yeah. we don't have any responsibility with our two hands of putting it on the ball, do we? We delegate that to the golf swing. We yeah. say, okay, I'm an executive. I don't do the dirty work of putting the club on the ball. I delegate that to my swing, and if I don't hit it well, then I blame the swing instead of me. Okay, yeah. Well, those days have to be over okay. because the fact is every time you miss hit, you did it with your two hands. When you bend a nail with a hammer, it's not because your hips went the wrong way or your shoulders did something. You missed it with your hand when you bent the nail, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And that keeps you from swinging harder than you could swing, doesn't it? Yeah. In other words, being able to hit it consistently on the center of the hammerhead yeah. gives you a limit to how hard you can hit it, doesn't it? Yeah. When you watch a framer who frames homes for a living, takes the hand, nail 16 penny spike, goes tap, boom, and he knocks it in with one swat. Yeah. We can't do that. No. Not because we don't have the speed, because we don't have the accuracy to hit it with that speed. Yeah. So the idea of moving your body in order to create that, now it's going to make the hammer move all over the place. This is a precision issue. Well, hitting a golf ball with a club face is a precision issue too. Mm -hmm. And making big muscle movements doesn't help us have precision accuracy. Okay. So the idea here, let me, let me make this point. For little boys, when we're born, the first six years of our life, is the gross motor development period. Running, jumping, climbing, big muscle things that we do, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. The gross motor system. If you're not Michael Jordan in running and jumping by the time you're six, you're never going to be that guy. Mm -hmm. It now is done developing and it's put on a read-only memory chip in our head, a ROM chip up there. We, we don't write over it if you are who you are. Yeah. You know, in your neighborhood, somebody was the fastest kid in the neighborhood, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he, he was knew. fastest every day. Uh-huh, yeah. Well, either you are or you aren't. That's gross motor stuff. You have speed or you don't. You can't go find it later in life. Okay. Okay? Now, throwing a baseball, 100 miles an hour. Oh, my Lord. 100 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah, mine's about 45. Yeah, I had a competition with friends a couple of years ago to, to break 80 at the... Uh, Phillies uh, Stadium. You know, they have the speed pitch, mm -hmm. and it took me all summer, but I, but I did it. Oh, good for you. <laughs> right. Good for you. Well, see, so. you were born with, with some of that already. Yeah. That's what you get. Okay. Then you work the muscles, you do the stuff, you do the reps and do the reps and do the reps for speed. But you can't become the 120 mile an hour thrower, can you? No, no. No matter what. So the idea is that when for your first six years of your life is your gross motor development period. Okay. And those motor programs, hitting, running, jumping, booing, whatever you do, the big muscles are put on a read-only memory chip. Okay. Can't write over it. Mm -hmm. After the age of six, the fine motor system, which is here in your mouth a little bit, but basically most of it is from the elbow to your fingertips. This is your fine motor system, biggest part, mm -hmm. right here. Yeah. And about 37% of your brain's allocated here. Okay. And this is teachable. It's random access memory the rest of our life. We can teach these to do new things. We can't teach the big muscles to do new sequences. Yeah, from when you're six, you learn how to touch type and paint and, and hit a baseball. draw. And pay, yeah, hit, hit a baseball, a baseball. Mm -hmm. hit a tennis ball, whatever you do and Ping however pong, you run, yeah. you're running up the hill to get away from the guy or you're going to hit the guy you're going to hit or whatever you're going to do. But you, all the big muscles are involved in that when you're playing little league baseball yeah. or playing pre-little league baseball, mm -hmm. playing anything. You're playing soccer. Yeah. All those skills that you get. Age six, you are who you are. Okay. For little girls, yeah. age three. Really? Yes. So they have three more years to develop that fine motor stuff mm -hmm. than we do. Okay. So they're usually very good with this, aren't they? Okay. And there's yeah. a good reason for it. Anyway, the idea then is that no matter what, from the time we're six years old, the motor learning function of our body is our fine motor system. Yeah. not the gross motor system. Okay. So if you try to teach somebody to do some sequence of the gross motor system, 
Yeah. Sorry. So you're saying that striking solid tour style, let's, let's call it yep. golf shots, yep. is a fine motor skill that you've, you've built into your program. Yep. Well, that's encouraging because that's something you can learn you to can do. You can learn to do. You can yeah. learn it. People, yeah. I teach people every day to do it. Okay. Uh -huh. And people who didn't think they could make play golf at all after they tried it and had everybody telling them what to do. Yeah. And I showed them how to do the with the fine motor system, blow the elbow, how to put the club against the ball this way yeah. instead of underneath it. And they go, boom. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I know. Well, that's one, th one thing I wanted to talk about now, AJ. I brought this little ball because it's mm -hmm. squishy. Uh -huh. See? Yep. Let's walk up here. We can get a little sure. closer to the camera. Sure. And uh, we can take your driver. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. So this is, should be auto-focusing pretty good. So, AJ, you were telling me uh, some really interesting things that mm -hmm. happen like during impact so mm -hmm. so how long is the ball connected to the face i can squish it on there a little bit we've all seen those slow motion you right. know golf ball commercials and things and and on pga tour and with it, a driver anywhere from and a, jump. Half, yeah. a half an inch to a little over half an inch that's how much squish you're getting that's that's how much it stays on the okay mm -hmm. it stays on the club for that much oh for oh time. for that much distance of your yeah. swing okay i got you and the time factor is um, just under two thousandth of a second okay mm -hmm. and that's really so doesn't that's what matters carry. that 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 two thousand yeah, we're doing all this stuff just to yeah. make that two thousandth of a second right decent and what were you telling me what now what's happening in in a really great player what's mm -hmm. happening during that two thousandth of a second the club is coming forward uh -huh. and the top of the face, the, hands, the handle is leaned forward this way. It's not, the club head's not even with the handle. Okay. The handle is forward and the club is de-lofted. Okay. And with, uh, as I said, we, we measure tour players that are 7 to 7.8, 7.9 degrees de-lofted with the driver mm -hmm. routinely. Right. And they're 7 to 8, 8 degrees de-lofted with the irons and the fairway woods all the time. Okay. Okay. And so this 8 degree de-loft Yep. The club is coming in and the handle is ahead. Yep. And as I square it this way, not only does it square up, but the top goes faster than the bottom. Yeah. See how that works? Mm -hmm. And that puts a longer horizontal force vector through the center of the ball. Okay. A force vector is an arrow that indicates the direction of the force. Yeah. The length of the arrow indicates the magnitude of the force. So mm -hmm. if I have a really long force vector, that shows I've got a lot of force going through the ball. They're putting more force this way yes. by getting the... Leaning the face forward this way as they hit it. So it's not just this, that it's leaned forward, it's in the process of leaning even more forward. Oh yeah. Every single as nano... Second that se it's on there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's in this it's going covering. Faster. It's going slightly faster than the bottom of the club face. Okay with the best players. Uh -huh. But the remaining loft is what hits it up in the air. It's not our job to hit it up in the air. Now, if somebody has the handle seven degrees forward, de-lofted, de -lofted, and it's getting even more de-lofted through the shot, wouldn't, wouldn't the ball just go, come out screaming super low? No, how, how does it no, actually go up? Because there's still remaining loft on here. And one uh -huh. of the things that happens with the driver is it always flexes this way when you hit it. Okay, yeah. Okay. So at impact, it's flexed forward. It's got more loft than it has built into it. Oh, okay. So, so as you're doing this and doing that, it's it still has we loft see on that. the club. Yeah, we right. see that in the, sure, in the still frame. It, right, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So this has plenty of loft on it when you hit it that okay. way, even though the feeling in your hand is that you got rid of all the loft at impact. It has, it's not a perfect straight line. It no. has because right. it's like this. It's bent yeah. both that way. So this thing, when it hits, the, the, um, the law of physics is the angle of incidence equals the angle of deflection. Yeah. So if I have say seven degrees here mm -hmm. it'll come off seven degrees to the other side from yeah. horizontal yeah okay it doesn't come off perpendicular to the loft it comes off higher mm -hmm. than the loft every time okay okay that's just yeah physics and this covering move or... the covering move doesn't get this to negative loft okay it, and it no keeps... matter how much it feels like it yeah and because because as it's coming in, it wants to go off higher, but you're covering it, you're, you're, you're keeping getting, the ball in yeah, face a little bit, longer. A little longer, but, and the idea then is that this, the weight distribution of the club, the more the weight is down here and you hit up here on the top, mm -hmm. the more it kicks back a little bit because there's not that mass behind it to, yeah. okay, so it kicks back a little bit like the toe kicks back when you tow it, yep. and you get a gear effect hook, yeah. you get a gear effect reduction, okay? okay? So it's going this way and you get, excuse me, you get a gear effect additional 
Yeah. If it kicks back this way. Yes. It no. puts a little topspin component on the ball that doesn't make the ball topspin because mm -hmm. every shot that comes off the driver right. airborne has backspin. There okay. ain't no topspin shots. Right. Top spins do this like yeah. they do in tennis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't hit a driver with top spin. The feeling may be that you're putting top spin on, but because of the loft of the driver, mm -hmm. it always, always, always puts backspin on your ball. So you can try to hit this with top spin and have your hand ahead and take the top feeling over the ball like that. It's still mm -hmm. going to go up because it has backspin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's one of those things that every other sport we play, we don't have mm -hmm. that conflict where we, we know we want to put top spin on the ping pong or the tennis ball. Mm -hmm. We know how to do that. Yeah. If I do that with a golf club and it has remaining loft down there, it's got backspin. But I did the top spin move. Yeah, right. Oh, wait a minute. That's supposed to, I can't hit the ball up in the air. If I do that, it'll go like this. Well, yeah. try it and see. Yeah. Boom. Oh, my goodness. It went high and far. We will try it. And, and what were you saying on one of the mm -hmm. videos I saw? Now, you're saying because this, say, say the ball is getting squished like this, mm -hmm. and because the top of the ball is getting squished at a faster rate than the bottom no, of the, the ball. Not the, 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 the toe is compressing the outside half of the ball faster than the heel side because mm -hmm. it's rotating at those 30 degrees per foot. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. 30 degrees per foot. These are measured numbers for tour players. So it's getting more squished on the outside. On the part that's mm -hmm. touching the toe, there's a little yeah. bit more. So that puts a hook torque on the ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I hit the ball with the face square at first, when I first touch it and I do that, yeah. there won't be any counteracting slice on there, will there? No. So it'll just go left and hook. Yeah. If I hit it with the face open at first touch, yeah. as I'm rotating the face the way all good players do, mm -hmm. I'll get a slight slice compression on okay. it. From okay. being open. From being open slightly. And then as I compress it this way, I put the hook torque back and I counteract them and they go straight. That's awesome. So what seems like the thing that would be the least cons consistent Yeah meaning rotating the toe, excuse me, as yeah. you hit it this way, mm -hmm. turns out to give you more consistency because you're backing the, the, the slight fade with the slight draw and mm -hmm. you end up with yeah. the difference between those two rather than doubling up one of them. And like the toe goes faster than the heel, mm -hmm. if, the, if the, the top is going mm -hmm. faster than the bottom, mm -hmm. Does this then take spin off the ball? Yeah, so how the, the pros are hitting it hard, but yep. it's only 2,000 spin or something. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little Still bit. Still has but, spin. But that is like very small. Like yeah. this to this is very mm -hmm. small compared to how much yes. this there is. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. A lot more videos coming up with AJ from my marathon session that I did down in San Diego with him coming up. If you want to see all of them, you have to be subscribed. It's that little red button on the lower left-hand corner below the video. And I'm also going to put them up early on BeBetterGolf.net, which is my website where I put things up uh, before they go public on YouTube. So check out those two things. If you have any questions for AJ, I can get them to him. Just put them in the comment section below, or if you have any questions for me, I try to respond to every comment that comes through. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.